Hi folks! Um, as promised, this is a video walking you guys through a little more logical forms and truth tables. Um, between this video and another video that I'll post over the weekend, I'm hoping to make a dent in some of the classes we've missed due to weather. So um, feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you guys on Wednesday. As a reminder, um, last time in class we started talking about logical forms. And so primitive logical forms are going to be our basic building blocks. Um, when we start talking about uh, more complicated logical forms and an introduction to formal first-order predicate logic. So in general we let our primitive forms were really placeholders where any given one of these could take on the value of true or false. And so beforehand we don't really know what these values are. These are things where um, for compound logical forms involving component logical forms, we're going to actually consider every possible truth assignment to our component primitive logical forms to try to identify the truth values for a compound logical form. Um, these primitive logical forms would eventually be replaced with statements, so things like, um, it is warm outside today. This is a statement where, um, since we're living in central Maryland midwinter, the answer is false today. So this particular statement has a truth value of false. Um, we also had truth statements, you know, things that made a little more, uh, were a little more mathematically relevant. So if we had the statement 7 is less than 5, also false. If we had the statement uh, 3 divides that's not how you spell that word, divides 9, that's a logical um, mathematical statement that's true. So again, our primitive logical forms are going to take on some truth assignment, true or false, but ahead of time these are really just placeholders. So given some logical form that contained multiple primitive logical forms, one of the ways that we were able to assess um, the structure and validity of a logical form was to look at truth tables. So as a reminder, um, if we had logical forms that contained only two um, primitive logical forms, um, we would build a truth table that had all uh, two squared or four possible assignments. So as a reminder, in general, if there are n logical forms, we have our two choices for truth values for each logical form. So p could be true or false, q can be true or false. So if there are n logical forms, or n primitive logical forms. We anticipate having a truth table that contains two to the n entries. So when we're looking at truth tables, or truth tables for logical forms with three primitive values, we would look at two cubed or eight entries. And so again, I mentioned in class you should build these systematically. Um, I kind of like this structure that I use, but um, as a reminder, um, our textbook actually for true um, instead of writing t, they use the numerical value 1, so in many ways it's like an on bit, and false, which they represent by 0. And so their truth tables will contain zeros and 1s, but they're logically equivalent. In class we covered three different types of logical connectives. Namely, um, so a logical connective is just some way of combining or changing different forms. And so our first operator on logical forms is going to be negation. And so as a reminder, negation, um, the negation of a logical form is um, the logical form that has truth value false if the form is true and truth value of true if the form is false. So negation exactly flips the values inside our truth table. Uh, for conjunction, um, this is the same thing as the, lo th this is the logical operator, meaning and. So in general, this form is only true when both P and Q are true. And we looked at in our, um, in the previous class, ways of picturing and as very similar to the intersection operator for sets. Um, disjunction, on the other hand, that's true of either P or Q is true. So this is an inclusive OR, and it behaves functionally similarly to the union of sets uh, in terms of what elements we expect in here. So both if P and Q are true, the combined form of disjunction is true, 
if um, p or if p is true and q is false, the combined form is true because p is true. If p is false and q is true, uh, q is also true. But in the case where both forms are false, our combined form is false. And so, in general, um, conjunction and disjunction are going to combine very nicely, um, or not combine, but will be able, they'll interact in a fairly regular way. Um, one of the big things that we will start doing next week is we're going to look at how we can take a combined form. So for example, this is the negation of conjunction. So I've got my conjunction right here, so I know that my first entry is false, and my remaining entries are true. Um, we actually ha might have more than one way to write a single form. So this negation of the intersect of the uh, negation of conjunction, it turns out will look very similar. Uh, and by look very similar, be exactly the same form as not p or not q. So in this case, for the negation of p to be true, p has to be false. So for the, for the disjunction of two forms to be true, all we need is one of them to be true. So not p is true in both of those cases. Um, we see that not q is going to be true if q is false. So we have not q is true here, and we've already taken care of the not p or not q down in our final row. But the form um, that when both p and q are true, the form not p or not q is false. And so looking at these two truth tables, we note that they have exactly the same entries. And so this is actually going to be one of our goals next week, is we're going to be looking at uh, what it means for two forms to be logically equivalent. And so we say that two forms are logically equivalent if they have exactly the same truth values. And so the way we're going to wind up denoting this is not p and q, um, if and only if. Sorry, I, it should be a double barred arrow. The double bar just means the truth values of these two forms are exactly the same. So logical equivalence is going to be one of our big goals over the next week. So there is a new type of logical connective that we haven't considered yet, namely a logical connective called implication. And implication is essentially built around this idea that um, if p is true, then q is also true. So this is kind of our, uh, the, the implication symbol um, is essentially the statement that if the first holds, then the second must hold. Um, we need to be careful with this. This opening statement, if p is true, if this is not satisfied, so if our premise isn't true, uh, we can't say anything in either direction, so we can't make any conclusion. Um, about the truth value of q. And so what we would like implication to act as is if p is true, then that forces q to be true. So in this case, if both p and q are true, implication is also true. The statement if p is true, then q is true, is not satisfied by this pair of truth values. Namely, in this one scenario, statement p is true, but q is false, so the implication, if p is true, forces q to be true, doesn't hold. So the implication form is false. But in general, if p isn't true, we don't have any information about q. And so we define implication um, to be true if p is false, because we're not really drawing any conclusions about q itself. So the, the, it's, the term for this is vacuously true. So P implies Q. That's not how you spell that word. Um, in the cases where P is false. So we're going to use implication a good deal. Um, and it's, it can be a little tricky, but we'll get used to it pretty quickly. So there's our 
or implication form. Um, in general, a biconditional um, is equivalent to the statement um, P is true if and only if Q is also true. So a biconditional, um, if P is false and Q is also false, that would satisfy P is true if and only if Q is true. And similarly, if both are true, then this statement P is true if and only if Q is true holds as well. So we have two true statements, but our middle pieces here, um, P being true and Q being false, this by implication or by conditional implication doesn't hold. So we have that um, these two are false. So in general, implication and biconditionals are going to be very closely tied to the idea of logical equivalence. And it turns out if I have some compound form, let's say um, A is some form involving some number of primitive forms, and B is another logical form, you know, potentially compound. These two statements are logically equivalent Uh, if and only if the by implication is always true. And so there is going to be a strong connection between these two different types of arrow symbols. So this idea of a double arrow telling us something about our, our logical forms having exactly the same set of truth values and by implication or by conditionals where we're looking for places where both P and Q are always true or false together. And this brings us to our final topic for this video, which is the idea of when a form is always true or always false. And so we're going to give two new definitions here. Namely, we say that a compound logical form is a tautology if it's always true. So no matter what our assignment of P's and Q's are, a tautology should be always true. So on our left, I'll do in a lighter color um, not P was true, you know, false, false, true, and true. Um, Q and P was true only here and false everywhere else. So I'm doing little sub-columns just for each of our component forms. And not Q is false, true, false, and true. So looking at this, the statement not P or Q and P or not Q, all we need is one of those three to be true. And looking through our um, looking through our truth values, we see that in the first one, the middle one's true, so our compound form is true. In the second one, our second form is our third form is true, and in the fir uh, the third, our first form is true. And in this last one, both the first and the second are true. So this is a form where every truth value is true. And so that means that this form, um, as a result, this form is a tautology. Um, similarly, we can get forms that are never true. So for this one, I have not P and Q and P. So this is kind of a little bit more of a gimme, but for not P to be true, We've got the negation of our of our form P. For Q and P to both be true, that only happens here and is false everywhere else. So there's all of our little component forms. For this joint form to be true, we need both the first statement and the second statement to hold, which looking through we see in no cases is that does that hold. And so this um, this logical form is a contradiction because it's never true. So it's going to be easy for us to identify tautologies and contradictions essentially because the, the way to identify them is check out the truth tables. If the truth tables are always T, you have a tautology on your hands. If the truth tables are always false, um, you have a contradiction. So they're going to be fairly easy for us to work with.
So next time we're going to look at some basic logical equivalences. So the rules of logic actually give us a lot of connections between forms. So today we already saw one form that looked very different but gave us an equivalent set of truth values. And so when we start um, what we're going to call an introduction to proof, a lot of our goals are going to be to show when two forms are logically equivalent. Um, some of this logical equivalence can be traced back to similar relationships in sets, and so we're going to look at some rules from formal set theory and how they connect to the axioms of logic. Um, so I will see you guys next time.